now I, I guess I knew it could be coming because I knew that Emgus could be a, a prelude to that but it was still like being hit by a train really and I can remember it quite clearly um, as you always do with something really significant like that you can remember the day the time everything and um, I went in and sat down and um, he told me that I had myeloma, that the Emgus had progressed into myeloma. The uh, consultant said to me at the time, we'd like to start you on chemotherapy straight away within the next few days. And threw lots of information at me. At the time, I, I just thought I need just to let the dust settle and absorb this. I said, well, can we just take a couple of weeks break so that we can at least take a quick holiday? That They were very helpful in that. They said yes. And, uh, and we went off to Barbados for a week. And I was in hospital for the stem cell transplant, um, <clears throat> um, during which they gave me a very strong um, form of chemotherapy, which kills all the bad cells that are left in the system after the chemotherapy, plus all the good cells as well. And uh, so they give you that, and then 24 hours later, they give you back um, the stem cells which they'd previously frozen. When I got home from hospital, it was a bit unnerving um, uh, uh, because of the, the sensitivity or the, to the risk of infection. And I was worried, having a dog, um, will I be okay with the dog? But I, I decided, actually, you know, I love my dog. Uh, uh, and um, I, I wasn't going to be put off by that. Things like that are quality of life issues. All right, then. Come on, Rupert. Good boy, aren't you? It took me about three months to really let it be known um, that I had a cancer diagnosis because um, the first three or four people that I told, um, uh, some, some of which I, I, I counted as really good friends, um, I had a really bad reaction from. Now, I can understand maybe the reasons for that in that nobody wants to consider their own mortality. When you present uh, the details to somebody that, that you have um, a, a, not a good prognosis, um, it's one of those things that, that can make fe people feel awkward. It's surprising how people come out of the woodwork, people that, that you wouldn't expect, um, who turn out to be great sources of strength. Amongst those sorts of people, as I said, I live in a small village, and I would say that the, the local village community um, have been a great source of strength to me. I was, I was quite fortunate in that um, a chap by the name of Duncan um, decided to start up um, a support group with the help of Myeloma UK. Going along to that group um, has, has been um, I would say, in some ways, uh, life-changing for me. I was very grateful that um, I was told about the presence of Myeloma UK and the work that they do, because it's made dealing with myeloma a lot easier. The most important piece of advice I could give to anybody is make sure that what you're doing makes you happy. I don't know what the future holds for me, but I do know that for my own peace of mind and sanity and, and for those around me who care for me, I, I'll always do my best to remain positive and just to get on with it really.